Well, we're ramping up on the plants for the meadow house, both the indoors and the patio plants, but actually some of the indoor plants we're going to be bringing outdoors here. And, you know, I love having just a little bit of that outdoor space because I could bring them out, give them a really good wash down. If any of them have mealy bugs, I could get maybe like the ladybugs or any of the um, green lace wings to take care of them when they're outside, but also give them some sharp sprays of water, which is a little easier than just doing it in the tub or the shower. But uh, yeah, so there's a lot going on today, but what we're going to be focusing on is this citrus tree, and this is a calamondin tree. And these are native to Asia, and so, you know, these are trees that we're not going to be growing in the ground here. We're in a grow zone 5-6. So uh, citrus luckily is the type of tree that works well indoors as well. Or if you have like a greenhouse, it's probably even better than bringing it indoors because um, when you get a little less light and you're bringing it indoors, I would say encourage you to maybe put it in a patio or if you're in the Northern hemisphere, putting it in a more Southern exposure where you get really good light because you will probably end up losing leaves. So since we have this patio space now and it is like really hot and humid out, um, I thought it would be kind of cool to introduce some of the citrus in grow pots that we could actually then uh, bring indoors. Um, I would probably bring this not into the meadow house because we don't have enough light, but I might actually bring it up to the common house where we have a bit more um, southern exposure and some really large curtain windows. I also have an olive tree behind as well. So uh, similar care, you know, olive is evergreen, so they won't lose a ton of leaves, not like um, citrus. And I think citrus is a bit more particular because my experience in growing citrus, and especially if you keep it indoors all the time, you're bound to get like spider mites or scale or mealy bugs or anything along those lines. So it's, it's a real challenge. Um, it, it's scale is quite common. In fact, I might actually even see, could be, this could be scale or it could just be little pockmarks. I think they're just pockmarks right now, but you know, you just have to be very wary of that because it could be a vector for other plants. But the calamondin tree, uh, like I said, it's native to Asia you'll see that where this grower had cut pieces of the top. So if you want it to grow um, bushy, you, you cut back at the top and you'll start to see these new growths starting to bush out here. So that's where this little leader was just like uh, swiped off and you start to see it bush out a bit more. And they tend to be pretty floriferous. I mean, if you've ever smelled citrus blooms, they are absolutely luscious. Um, pretty overpowering, especially on a day like this where there's like no wind and if you walk by citrus blooms, you would you would smell that perfume in the air. In a good way, in a good way. And the Calamondin uh, little orange, it tends to be a fairly prolific tree if you could get it what it needs. I guess it's more akin to a very thin skinned like lemon or lime, but it'll get green, which will be underripe, and then you could start to get like a yellowish orange, and that's when you know it's ripe. Folks will use it into in traditional cooking or will use it as an alternative to a lemon, for instance. I'm also probably gonna get a kumquat tree, and those are the ones that have a very sweet outer rind, and you could actually eat them, rind and all. So I'll be looking at that. And then you could see I got this one, it came in the mail, and you could see some of the roots are kind of exposed, and I think that's because, you know, it easily gets thrashed around in the mail. So we're going to be using a regular potting mix. And if I had more perlite, which I don't, I ran out of perlite, um, I would put it in there because citrus really wants uh, dry feet. It doesn't want to be sitting in wet all the time. It likes water, but it likes drainage. So we have to consider that. And I will be using some citrus tone, or if you're if you're indoors and you're bringing it in for the fall or, for, or whatnot, or if you have it on a patio, you might just want to even use a liquid uh, fertilizer. So this is Espoma Organics citrus fertilizer, but I might use a little citrus tone. But since I'm not planting this in the ground, uh, if you follow like kind of the back of the directions, like for the tree height and the amount of citrus tone that you would use, it's almost too much in a pot because you don't you want to put the citrus tone at least six inches away from the uh, trunk of the tree 
And when you're working in such a confined position and you're not kind of out in the environment, like obviously if you're in like a zone, you know, 10 or 11, you might be able to plant the citrus tree outdoors in your yard. And we just don't have that luxury here. So we're gonna keep it into a container and we would just add a little bit of citrus tone or we could go um, uh, with the liquid fertilizer as well. So, and the citrus tone, I should say, you know, has the NPK, but they also, have um, some other micronutrients as well. I believe like magnesium, let's see what it has on here. Yeah, magnesium and calcium and sulfur, for instance. So uh, some of those micronutrients is important for all plants, but especially for citrus because it could actually be a, a heavy feeder. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get started on this and I'll talk to you along the way about other pieces of citrus care. So we're just gonna pull this out carefully and see what the roots look like. And it looks pretty good. You know, again, if you see anything that's a kind of brown bits or anything along those lines, um, or anything that looks rotted, you could actually cut it out. But this looks really great and it doesn't look root bound at all. I'm gonna keep it in its pot for now because we will need to um, put some soil up so it kind of lifts it up out of here. And this pot, I should say, is a terracotta pot with two holes in the bottom. So the more holes, the merrier, I guess, when you have your, your citrus so that it could really uh, drain well. Because like I said, if you over, if you have a tendency to overwater it or you leave it outside and like this week, it's gonna rain all the time. And if it's not well draining enough, then you know, you're going to have, uh, you're likely going to have rot with citrus. And that is uh, common um, with your citrus plants. So again, if I had perlite, this has perlite in it, this potting medium, but if I had some, I would add more. <laughs> and then I have this big bag of potting medium, which, oh my goodness, it's just about uh, a little too heavy for carrying. Yeah, and the way that we're doing the patio and the, the garden uh, it kind of has a little bit more of that kind of Mediterranean vibe, especially on this side. This is, feels a little bit more uh, a farmhouse vibe, but it's kind of like a different, um, like cosmopolitan country is kind of what I'm calling it. And I've definitely had my fair share of uh, citrus growing in the city, but it's really hard because I never had any outdoor space except for my um, fire escape. And it gets a little bit more challenging as the tree gets larger and larger, or uh, if you get yelled at for having stuff on your fire escape because it is illegal to have things on your fire escape, you could usually get away with it. But uh, sometimes when they're coming in and they're taking a look at things, they, they want, they want uh, more compliance in the city for sure. Here, I could have more freedom. So when you're planting this, make sure that you don't cover the base. You know, you want it just right at the, the root zone. So that's important. I'm gonna actually bring this up a little more. And this could actually have fit in probably even a smaller pot. Surprisingly, a lot of citrus don't mind to be a little constrained. And actually we do, uh, we did a, a real full length citrus care video, general citrus care video with By Byron Martin from Logies. So I'll link to that because it's very informative and Byron has been growing citrus and his father and his grandfather have been growing citrus and he has old citrus trees that are over a hundred years old. We did a whole tour of the Logies greenhouses and they in particular really love their citrus and they grow them in greenhouses primarily but take you know cuttings off of fairly large trees and so you, you get trees that flower uh, very quickly because they're basically cuttings from old trees that flower and fruit. So uh, they're big proponents of actually container grown citrus. And they've even worked on some specimens that are more easily, are like kind of dwarf varieties or smaller varieties that are good for the home. And if you wanna keep it a bit more contained, well then like I said, and I showed you here, you could cut some of the tips off and then let it bush out. You could really shape your citrus. And here, I'll show you that this was grafted 
and this is right around where the graft is. And you know, I would be careful for any type of collar rot or anything around the base if you have too much mulch around it. So I'm probably gonna get like maybe some bonsai mix or anything along those lines and put it up on top. And just have that maybe look a little nicer and then also give some drainage for the top. Okay, I wanna make sure that this is straight. I have a habit of like maybe planting things a little crookedly. Um, and now I talked a little bit about the, the pests that could attack citrus, you know, mealybug, scale, like hard scale and some, uh, I've never seen thrips, but I'm sure it's actually possible. And then of course, spider mites. And one of the first lines of actions that I have if I have pests like that are sharp sprays from the hose. That's the ideal. Really try to spray them off. With hard scale, it's gonna be a bit more challenging and you might need to use some type of systemic pesticide in order to be able to get them off. Um, some folks will use like a horticultural oil or a neem. I would just advise, make sure that you're doing it on a very cloudy day or when the plant is in the shade because sometimes those oils can have a disastrous effect on the leaves and uh, start to burn the leaves if it's, if it's done in the sun. So you just wanna be aware of that. And again, you could use um, a citrus tone and kind of mix it in, but because this is actually um, quite uh, small of a pot, and again, I'm not planting it in the ground, I'm just gonna do a little bit of citrus tone right around the edges and kind of mix that in. And then I'm going to rely mostly on this Espoma Organic Citrus Fertilizer because that one's a bit more amenable to watering in and diluting it. So typically a tree this size, you're looking at, you know, maybe up to six cups of this Espoma citrus tone if you're planting it in the ground. And again, I said, if you're planting it in the ground because you have the ability to be able to have it spread out a bit more. So I'm just gonna lightly put some in here. And again, you don't wanna to get too close to the trunk because you actually might burn the plant. And then I'm going to use some of this. Now you, you'll want to actually fertilize this tree in the spring, summer, and fall. And I think if you get it three times per year, that's gonna be fine. So a little bit before flowering, a little after flowering, and then right before um, it goes into its dormancy, you could give a maybe half strength fertilizer because it's going more into a, a dormant phase. And it will probably be losing some of its leaves if you're bringing it in, its house, in the house. All right, let me see if I can get this out. I usually save these sticks for something else. It could be really helpful in the landscape. This potting medium may actually settle in a bit more, so you have to kind of take a look at it, especially if you're leaving it outdoors as it, as it settles in or if you water it just in like one location. For instance, I try to encourage folks to water around it so it gets thorough watering all the way around. If you water, if you have a tendency to water on one side, which I do all the time, um, the roots will often travel over to that section and the plant will have a tendency to tip over, especially if you have a really lightweight pot, uh, like a fiberglass or a plastic pot. This is a terracotta pot and you know, kind of has a tendency to suck the water out, which is good for a citrus tree because like I said, it doesn't want to retain too much moisture. It wants to get that moisture and then let it release. Some plants are a little bit better with um, keeping their roots in the kind of a, a moist medium all the time. Citrus is not one of them. And I remember Byron Martin even said that they could dry out a little bit more than people expect. He's had uh, plants that he's had in the greenhouse where the irrigation either broke or um, people forgot to water them and they were dried and the plant looked like it was dead. And as soon as he turned the irrigation on or watered it and the plant would just perk right back up. So he's always uh, impressed with actually the re resiliency of a, a citrus plant. So uh, I'm, I'm eager to see this bloom because like I said, it already has some blooms. It has some new growth. It looks great. Uh, the folks who had sent this to me picked a, a really nice tree. It's a bit spindly, but you'll be surprised as it starts to kind of bush out over the course of the season, especially now that we're giving it some nice summer temperatures here 
in New York. I think it's going to really enjoy that. And I'll have it probably under here where it's protected from some of that rain so that I will have more of the responsibility to water this plant next time I'm actually here. All right, that's a bit more of a citrus care. And if you want like a full on citrus care, uh, you could go and tune into that one that we did with Byron Martin at Logies. Uh, but this is the Calamondan tree and who knows, maybe we'll even be harvesting them this year. Stay tuned because I'll be working on the plant palette for this patio and the home in some subsequent videos here on Plant One On Me. And if you'd like to see the befores and afters on this renovation, then you'll have to tune into our sister channel at Flock Finger Lakes. If you dig these videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up, follow along through subscribing and hitting that notifications button. And keep in mind that we have a suite of online houseplant courses and helpful downloads, which you could find at homesteadbrooklyn.com. We'll see you in the next video.